Here it is. Our brand new GeForce RTX 50 series Blackwell architecture. The GPU is just a beast. 92 billion transistors, 4,000 tops, four petaflops of AI, three times higher than the last generation ADA. And we need all of it to generate those pixels that I showed you. 380 ray tracing teraflops so that we could, for the pixels that we have to compute, compute the most beautiful image you possibly can. And of course, 125 shader teraflops. There is actually a concurrent shader teraflops as well as an integer unit of equal performance. So two dual shaders, one is for floating point, one is for integer. G7 memory from Micron, 1.8 terabytes per second, twice the performance of our last generation. And we now have the ability to intermix AI workloads with computer graphics workloads. And one of the amazing things about this generation is the programmable shader is also able to now process neural networks. So the shader is able to carry these neural networks, and as a result, we invented neural texture compression and neural material shading with the Blackwell family RTX 5070. 4090 performance at 549. Impossible without artificial intelligence. Impossible without the four tops, four teraops of AI tensor cores. Impossible without the G7 memories. Okay, so 5070, 4090 performance, $549, and here's the whole family. Starting from 5070 all the way up to 5090. 5090, twice the performance of a 4090. Starting of course, we're producing a very large scale availability starting January. Well, it is incredible, but we managed to put these in, in gigantic performance GPUs into a laptop. This is a 5070 laptop. For $1299, this 5070 laptop has a 4090 performance. And so the 5090, the 5090, will fit into a laptop, a thin laptop. That last laptop was 14.9 14, 14 millimeters. You got a 5080, 5070 Ti, and 5070. With several AI-focused announcements at say in Las Vegas on Monday, Nvidia hopes to continue its winning streak from 2024 into 2025. During the company's speech, CEO Jensen Huang outlined his vision for a new AI supercomputer that can fit on your desk as well as AI software that would power robots and self-driving cars. As Wall Street prepared for the AI darling's newest offerings, NVIDIA's stock price surged as high as 4.7% prior to Monday's speech. Thanks to its foresighted investments in AI hardware and its CUDA software, which enables developers to utilize its processes to execute AI programs, the company's stock has risen a staggering 205% over the past 12 months. The most recent announcements centered on how programmers can utilize NVIDIA's Hopper and Blackwell platforms, which are its current hardware. The business may make its next-generation chip debut at its March GTC conference. Huang demonstrated the GB10 Superchip, NVIDIA's newest Blackwell-based chip, at the event on Monday. It is a miniature version of the GB200 Superchip, which consists of two Blackwell graphics processing units, GPUs, and a Grace Central Processing Unit, CPU. The smaller GB10 has a Blackwell GPU and a Grace CPU. According to NVIDIA, the CPU will be offered in a compact desktop system called Project Digits, which will have 4 terabytes of storage and 128 gigabytes of RAM. The configuration, according to the business, is strong enough for academics who want to run, optimize, and prototype massive AI models. NVIDIA and its OEM partners will launch Project Digits in May, with a starting price of $3,000. In addition to its new desktop and processor, NVIDIA also unveiled Cosmos, an open model license platform for creating tangible AI systems. The platform makes use of artificial intelligence, i.e., models called World Foundation Models, or WFMs, which replicate real-world circumstances. Self-driving automobiles and humanoid robots are examples of physical AI systems. 
Instead of using expensive robots or placing automobiles on the road in the real world, firms can use Cosmos to simulate different usage situations in a virtual environment and help create the software required to power robots and self-driving cars. So, what implications does this have for NVIDIA's stock? Let's explore that. But first, a big thank you to those of you who've stuck with us this far. Creating these videos takes significant effort and dedication, so if you're enjoying the content, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts on NVIDIA stock in the comments. But what we basically have here is 72 Blackwell GPUs or 144 dies. This one chip here is 1.4 exaflops. The world's largest supercomputer, fastest supercomputer, only recently, this entire room supercomputer only recently achieved an exaflop plus. This is 1.4 exaflops of AI floating point performance. It has 14 terabytes of memory, but here's the amazing thing. The memory bandwidth is 1.2 petabytes per second. That's basically, basically the entire internet traffic that's happening right now. The entire world's internet traffic is being processed across these chips, okay? And we have um, 130 trillion transistors in total, 2,592 CPU cores, whole bunch of networking. And so these, I wish I could do this. I don't think I will. So these are the Blackwells. These are our ConnectX networking chips. These are the NVLink, and we're trying to pretend about the, MV, the, the NVLink spine, but that's not possible, okay? And these are all of the HBM memories, 12 ter 14 terabytes of HBM memory. This is what we're trying to do, and this is the miracle, this is the miracle of the Blackwell system. So we fine tune them using our expertise and our capabilities, and we turn them into the Llama Nemotron suite of open models. There are small ones, that interact in uh, very, very fast response time, extremely small. Uh, they're uh, super, what we call super, Llama Nemotron supers. They're basically your mainstream versions of your models. Or your ultra model, the ultra model could be used uh, to be a teacher model for a whole bunch of other models. It could be a reward model, evaluator, uh, a judge for other models to create answers and decide whether it's a good answer or not. Give, basically give feedback to other models. It could be distilled in a lot of different ways. Basically, a teacher model, a knowledge distillation uh, uh, model. Very large, very capable. And so all of this is now available online. NVIDIA Cosmos, the world's first world foundation model. It is trained on 20 million hours of video. The 20 million hours of video focuses on physical dynamic things, so na na dynamic nature, nature themes, themes uh, humans uh, walking, uh, hands moving, uh, manipulating things, uh, you know, things that are uh, fast camera movements. It's really about teaching the AI, not about generating creative content, but teaching the AI to understand the physical world. And from this, with this physical AI, there are many downstream things that we could uh, do as a result. We could do synthetic data generation to train uh, models. We could distill it and turn it into effectively the seed, the beginnings of a robotics model. You could have it generate multiple physically based, physically plausible uh, scenarios of the future, basically do a Doctor Strange. Um, you could, uh, because because this model understands the physical world, of course you saw a whole bunch of images generated, this model understanding the physical world, it also uh, could do, of course, captioning. And so it could take videos, caption it incredibly well, and that captioning and the video could be used to train large language models, multi-modality large language models. And uh, so you could use this technology to uh, use this foundation model to train robotics, robots as well as large language models. And so this is the NVIDIA Cosmos. The platform has an autoregressive model for real-time applications, has diffusion model for a very high quality image generation. It's incredible tokenizer, basically learning the vocabulary of uh, real world and a data pipeline so that if you would like to take all of this and then train it on your own data, this data pipeline, because there's so much data involved, 
we've accelerated everything end to end for you. And so this is the world's first data processing pipeline that's CUDA accelerated as well as AI accelerated. All of this is part of the Cosmos platform. And today we're announcing that Cosmos is open licensed. It's open available on GitHub. We examine NVIDIA's chart in more detail below and apply technical analysis to pinpoint important price points to look for in early January. NVIDIA shares have been trading in a falling channel since hitting their record high in late November. The price has repeatedly tagged the upper and lower trend lines of the pattern. Although the move happened on weak end-of-year share turnover, the stock more recently encountered selling pressure close to the channel's top trend line and 50-day moving average, MA. When the relative strength index, RSI, drops below 50, it indicates a little adverse price momentum for the stock at the beginning of 2025. As the first quarter begins, let's examine the main levels of support and resistance on NVIDIA's chart that investors might be watching. The first level to keep an eye on is around $130, where the shares might find support close to a trend line that joins the December swing low and the well-known August swing high. The shares may break below the lower trend line of the declining channel and retest lower support at $115 if they close decisively below this significant technical milestone. Currently trading just below the rising 200-day MA, this position is expected to draw purchasing attention in the vicinity of a horizontal line, connecting a number of similar price points from May to October of last year. Investors should first keep an eye on the $140 region if the price moves higher than its present levels. In this area, the shares can encounter resistance close to the upper trend line of the descending channel, which also happens to be in close proximity to the stock's peak in June 2024. If you buy over this level, the shares might rise to about $150. Those who purchased the recent retracement may try to lock in profits in this region close to a sequence of price movements that are located just below the stock's all-time high. So what implications does this have for NVIDIA's stock? Let's explore that. But first, a big thank you to those of you who've stuck with us this far. Creating these videos takes significant effort and dedication. So if you're enjoying the content, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts on NVIDIA stock in the comments. Your support truly helps us grow. Now let's get back to the video. Today we're announcing that our next generation processor for the car, our next generation computer for the car is called Thor. I have one right here, hang on a second. Okay, this is Thor. This is Thor. This is, this is a robotics computer. This is a robotics computer, it takes sensors, it just, madness amount of sensor information. Process it, you know, umpteen cameras, high resolution, radars, lidars, they're all coming into this chip. And this chip has to process all that sensor, turn them into tokens, put them into a transformer, and predict the next path. And this AV computer is now in full production. Thor is 20 times the processing capability of our last generation Orin, which is really the standard of autonomous vehicles today. And so this is just really quite, quite incredible. Thor is in full production. This robotics processor, by the way, also goes into a full robot. And so it could be an AMR, it could be a, a, a human or robot, uh, it could be the brain, it could be the uh, manipulator. Uh, this, ro this processor basically is a universal robotics computer. The chat GPT moment for general robotics is just around the corner. And in fact, all of the enabling technologies that I've been talking about is going to make it possible for us in the next several years to see very rapid breakthroughs, surprising breakthroughs in, in general robotics. Now the reason why general robotics is so important is whereas robots with tracks and wheels require special environments to accommodate them, there are three robots Three robots in the world that we can make that require no green fields. Brown field adaptation is perfect. If we, if we could possibly build these amazing robots, we could deploy them in exactly the world that we've built for ourselves. These three robots are, one, agentic robots, and agentic AI, because you know they're information workers, so long as they could accommodate uh, the computers that we have in our offices, it's gonna be great. Number two, self-driving cars, and the reason for that is we spent 100 plus years building roads and cities. And then number three, human or robots. If we have the technology to solve these three, this will be the largest technology industry the world's ever seen. This is, 
NVIDIA's latest AI supercomputer. And, and it's finally called Project Digits right now. And if you have a good name for it, uh, reach out to us. Um, uh, this, here's the amazing thing. This is an AI supercomputer. It runs the entire NVIDIA AI stack. All of NVIDIA software runs on this. DGX Cloud runs on this. This sits, well, somewhere, and it's wireless or you know, connected to your computer. It's even a workstation if you like it to be. And you could access it, you could, you could reach it like a, like a cloud supercomputer, and NVIDIA's AI works on it. And um, it's based on a, a super secret chip that we've been working on called GB110, the smallest Grace Blackwell that we make. And this is the chip that's inside. It is in, it is in production. This top secret chip uh, we did in collaboration, the CPU, the gray CPU, was a, uh, is built for NVIDIA in collaboration with MediaTek. Uh, they're the world's leading SOC company, and they worked with us to build this CPU, this CPU SOC, and connect it with chip-to-chip -chip NVLink to the Blackwell GPU. And uh, this, little, this little thing here is in full production. Uh, we're expecting this computer to uh, be available uh, around May timeframe. Additionally, NVIDIA said that it has partnered with the automaker Continental and the self-driving truck startup Aurora to deploy NVIDIA's drive hardware and drive OS software in conjunction with Aurora's level 4 autonomous driving system, Aurora Driver. Starting in 2027, Continental and Aurora want to deploy autonomous vehicles for freight transportation. Relatively little of NVIDIA's total income still comes from its automotive and robotics divisions. Compared to its data center business, which generated $30.8 billion of its $35.1 billion in total revenue in Q3, the segment generated $449 million in Q3. Despite this, automotive and robotics is expanding, as seen by the 72% year-over-year increase in revenue during the quarter. Lastly, NVIDIA revealed a variety of AI hardware and software products, such as its AI blueprints, agentic AI applications that let programmers create and release their own unique AI agents. Specialized AI programs known as AI agents are capable of carrying out multi-step activities across many apps. Because AI agents can automate more routine operations like importing data from emails into spreadsheets, companies like Google and Microsoft are placing a large bet on them as the next big thing in enterprise and consumer AI. Additionally, NVIDIA announced that its NVIDIA NIM platform will now enable users to launch foundation models on its most recent RTX graphics cards. Through its NIM service, the business is essentially enabling AI capabilities for common graphics cards, which should expand options for software developers and help it attract more clients in the future. Don't forget to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Your input helps create a more knowledgeable community where we can all learn and grow together in the world of investing. Stay up to date with the latest market trends, insights, and key updates by subscribing to Investing Tutorial. We're here to help you make smarter investment decisions and stay ahead of the curve.